Hi. Just wanted to talk to you how to use our library's EBSCO. So to get to EBSCO, which is another really good article search engine, you're going to want to first go to our library's website. So there's a few ways you could get there, but perhaps the easiest is to just type AVC EBSCO into Google. It should be the first link you find. So www.abc.edu student services library. That looks correct, so let's click on that. So this is our library's web page. Now if you scroll down, it should be right there, right in the middle of the screen, you see. It's EBSCO delivery service. Now, <coughs> you use it, <coughs> sorry, you use it just like you would use Google Scholar. You just type in your keywords and you click search. Uh, but one of the neat things about EBSCO is that you can specify that you want to look at only peer-reviewed journals and you want to only look for full text. So let's click both of those. So let's just type in the same key term that we used last time. It was a uh, visual illusion. And click search. But now here is one of the problems. If you're trying to do uh, search using EBSCO off campus, like right now I'm at my house. I if you're trying to do a, a search on EBSCO, you're going to have to log in. So just use your AVC username and password to log in, and then you'll be able to use EBSCO. Yeah, just read through all this stuff, click yes, and continue. All right, so here is our results from doing the search. And you can see that this is organized a bit different from Google Scholar, but it has the same kinds of sources here. Uh, like, like you saw just a moment ago, we specified that we're only interested in scholarly journal, like peer-reviewed journal articles, and those that have full text. So this is going to give me less um, sources the, the list is going to be shorter than it was on Google Scholar, but at least I know all of these I can download and read whenever I want. So let's just check these out. <coughs> let's click on this first one. So this has all the information up here, the author's names, the, s the journal, uh, the article title, <coughs> and here's the abstract. Yeah, so if I keep scrolling down, I can read the full paper. But as I said in the last video, you don't want to read the full paper just yet. When you're doing a literature review, you want to find a few good sources before you start actually getting into them and reading about them. To decide if this is a source you want to read, that you might want to use in your literature review, first look at the title, and if the title sounds interesting, the next step is to look at the abstract. So that's right here. So let's say that this is one that I want to use. Well, there's a few things I could do now. I can download as a PDF. I can uh, save it to my drive, add it to my folder. I can even print it out or email it. You have all kinds of options here. But I think the most important thing to do is to just get that PDF. So let's click on that. So it opens it up in a little window here as you can see. And it's just a regular PDF file and you can download it like any other PDF file. So just click the download button and save it wherever you want and you can read it later. You could also print it out of course but I don't recommend that. It's just a huge waste of paper you're probably going to be finding a lot of articles and if you print them all out you'll run out of ink super fast. So don't bother. Just uh, read it when it's on your computer screen. Alright, so let's say that you do decide that this is a good article, but let's, let's see if we can find a few more. So let's hit back a couple times. Alright, so let's check out this one. 
same basic thing. It's got all the same kinds of information. Uh, abstract is right there. You can download the PDF over here. Save that as well if you want. Everything looks good. Alright, but there's a f many other features that EBSCO provides, and I wanted to just show you a few of those. Let's go back to this first article I found real quick. Now, if you look at these options on the right, a lot of these you probably won't need to use, but there are a few that are pretty useful, like the Site button. Let's click on that. Now, when you click on the Site button, it gives you how the proper format to save these in different styles. Like if I wanted to save this and put this into my references list, here's the APA style version. So you just want to copy and paste. <coughs> but something I was saying about um, Google Scholar also applies here, and that is it can make mistakes. It's just a program and it's not perfect. So you always want to double check to see if that reference page entry is free of errors. And I can already tell you this one's got some problems. For whatever reason it put the author, the third author's uh, email address in the author list. You definitely don't want to have that there. So we would want to delete that when we paste it into our references list. But for the most part, it's pretty helpful. It may make some mistakes like that, but it's usually pretty helpful. To, to make sure you don't have any of those kinds of mistakes at your references list, you should check out my other tutorial video that's all about uh, APA style for reference pages. All right. Now, so EBSCO can do just about everything Google Scholar can do. They're formatted a little bit differently. Uh, but there are some things that EBSCO can do much more easily than Google Scholar, and it makes it pretty useful. So what we did, <coughs> where we just put in some key terms and click search, that's called a basic search. But you also have this option of advanced search. So let me just show you a little bit about that. If you click that, now you can put in multiple key terms. And you can even specify what kind of key term it is. So like we could look for key terms that only show up in the title of the paper. We could look for key terms that show up in the author list. So like let's say we're looking for a study published in, uh, I don't know, let's just type visual for the title field. And then let's see if it finds anything for my name in the author list. So it's going to look for visual and title, add Lewis and author. So let's click search. All right, so it looks like it did find some papers published by a Lewis, somebody with the last name of Lewis, and has the word visual in the title. There's actually a few, as you can see. Quite a few. So let's be more specific. Let's add another key term. How about... How about we add, uh, hmm. well, let's, let's actually do something else that's interesting. I'm going to type in synthetic, and I'm going to say I don't want to have synthetic. So I'm going to choose, instead of and, I'm going to choose not. So I'm looking for articles that have visual in the title, Lewis in the author list, but not synthetic anywhere. I don't want anything synthetic here. So let's click search and see what happens. Yeah, so it looks like it got rid of all the ones that had the word synthetic in them. And here's something else that's pretty neat about EBSCO. Let's go back a few real quick. Something else that's pretty neat is that you have a search history. So if we click on that, it shows you every search that you've done using this advanced search. And you can do the same search again, and if anything has been published since the last time, it'll update. 
with that new information. And you can even combine searches. So like if I want to combine these two and do a, a search that includes all of those terms together, I could search with AND or OR. And that's what these buttons are for. Alright, so that's some of the stuff that makes EBSCO pretty neat. I mean, there's obviously a lot more features here. It can be a little overwhelming how many features there are. But at its most basic form, you just type in some key terms, you find some sources, and you can download the PDFs for them. So it can be pretty useful in that way. I mean, just to mention a couple things, like you could specify a range that you want to look for articles in by moving this slider. You could... Uh, limit to specific kinds of sources and so on. There's plenty of stuff to play around with and explore but I just wanted to give you the general overview of how to use EBSCO to find scientific journal articles. Alright?